We're going to use this Thompson coil to demonstrate several principles that we've been talking about. The first is, if you take this solenoid, this is a coil of wire, cylindrical coil of wire. I'm not sure how many windings are on there. And we apply a current to it, then we can create a magnetic field in the center of the solenoid. Uh, we'll be energizing this with an uh, alternating current. 60 times a second, the direction of the current will change from clockwise to counterclockwise. And the magnetic field generated inside of the coil will be either up when we have clockwise current or down when we have a counterclockwise current. These rods here confine the magnetic field so that the magnetic field will extend beyond this uh, inductor and so that we'll be able to put uh, a ring on here to, to experience a um, change in magnetic flux. Now what's going to happen here is this, um, the world according to this, this ring, he's going to see a magnetic field that's up, then down, alternating 60 times a second. But that magnetic field will, through Faraday's law, that changing magnetic flux inside of this ring will generate an electromotive force, or EMF, inside that ring. There's a 90 degree phase lag between the change in flux and the EMF in the ring. Then that EMF in this ring will generate a current in the ring. There's a 90 degree phase lag between these two as well. So the bottom line is at the end of the day, we get a current in this ring that's been created by this uh, changing magnetic flux through this, um, through the ring. A current in a ring, if you think back to the third grade when you wound a wire around a nail and create and magnetize the nail, anytime you have a current in a ring, you create a magnetic field in the ring. But because of the phase lag, the two 90 degree phase lags um, that we talked about before, the direction of the field in this coil will be exactly opposite the direction of the field in the, uh, produced by the Thompson coil itself. So what happens then is that we have north pole against north pole and uh, a repulsive force on this ring which allows you to levitate the ring. This is a steel ring. This is brass, a little bit better conductor, and aluminum, an even better conductor. And finally, I got one more aluminum ring that I want to put on here and try out. Um, as you can see, this one fails utterly to, uh, to fly. The reason, we've got a slit in the ring that prevents any current in the ring and therefore prevents the, the magnetic force from pushing it up. That's Thompson coil.